nice fishy, fishy, fishy. Stay, stay. Ah! Ah, stop! Put me down! Put me down! Oh, please put me down! That was a very nice. I'm no threat. I'm Andy. Oh, oh my bottom! What was that? Oh, oh, it's a sea urchin. I can see why Mr. Hammond wasn't able to dance for a week. Those spines are really sharp. And look, they're eating that young kelp, just like the big ones back at Safari World. Oh, it's you again. Now, look, you dropped me right onto one of these spiky urchins. If anything, they're the problem around here, not me. Whoa, look at that. A Garibaldi just picked up the urchin by those sharp spines and dragged it away. And another. And another. Incredible. It must be doing a spot of housekeeping. He just removes everything from his territory, including me. Here we go again. Oh, oh tickles. No. Oh, oh, you know what? If the Gary Bordy is so good at removing sea urchins, then maybe that's what we need back at Safari World. Um, thanks for the lift, but would you mind putting me down now, please? Oh, thank you. Well, that hardly ever works. Right, I need to tell Jen the good news. Oh, no. The urchins are just crawling back to where they came from. Oh, there must be another answer. Something else must be driving the urchins away. But all I can see here are fish and sea otters. Hmm, what's that one up to? Oh, he's definitely got something. Ah, and it looks like he's taking it back to the surface. It's an urchin! The otter's eating it! Of course! That's what's missing from the Aquaforest Dome back at Safari World. Otters! I'll call Jen to let her know. Oh, Andy, thank goodness. Have you found out how to stop the urchins from eating all the kelp? They're getting really out of control here. And I don't think I can put off Mr. Hammond from his dive for much longer. It's all right, Jen. I've got the answer. Sea otters, they love eating urchins. It must be one of their favorite foods. Really? Wow, that's great news. There must be a tusk fish around here somewhere. Aha! There's one. Look at those teeth. They look just like tusks, don't they? Oh, I can see where they get their name from. Now, I've heard you have a collection of broken shells. I was just wondering if you would let me have some. As long as you don't need them, that is. Oh, looks like we're off. Wait for me. Ah, this is the life. Swimming along the Great Barrier Reef with a tusk fish by my side. Hmm, where's he taking me, I wonder? Hopefully, to his stash of broken shells. Hmm, that's strange. He's fanning the sand with his fin. He's definitely looking for something. Wow, he's very strong. Oh, I see. That's what he's been searching for, a clam. That's the type of shell I'm looking for. But it's the broken ones I'm after. Hmm, well, where's he taking it? Let's go and find out. What's that strange looking coral up ahead? It looks like a huge bowl. The tusk fish is heading straight for it. the clam against that bump on the coral. I 
think he's trying to crack open the shell. He must be hungry for what's inside. He's very determined. Look how he's using his teeth to grip onto the clam. What a clever fish! It's not so easy when you don't have hands. Uh, let me get that for you. Hi, little fish. You're doing great. Almost there. Hooray! You've done it! Now you can enjoy your tasty meal. <laughs> it looks like he's done this lots before. Look! Look at all these broken clamshells. These are just what I need to stop the slugs back at Safari World. <laughs> Whoa, Jem was right. There's definitely something down there. Come on, let's investigate. Oh, yes, it's the Saddleback Clownfish I'm looking for. They get their name Saddleback because of that white stripe across their backs, which I suppose does look a bit like a saddle, doesn't it? Clownfish make their homes inside animals called anemones. This is a carpet anemone, just like the one we have back at Safari World. Can you see those tentacles? Well, the anemone uses those to catch food, but they can also give you a poisonous sting. Luckily for clownfish, they're immune to the anemone's poison. That means that they won't get stung, but I could, so I'd better keep my distance. This really is a perfect partnership. The anemone gives the clownfish not only a safe place to live, but also scraps of food to eat. In return, the clownfish gets the anemone clean and tidy. Everyone's a winner. As fascinating as this is, none of it is helping me on my mission. Everything seems pretty normal here. The clownfish don't seem to be wandering off like the ones back at Safari World. What's this anemone got that ours doesn't? Whoa, look at the size of this one. Oh, it says here that this is a female. And when they have a striking white face like this, it makes her the head of the family. Wow, she's enormous compared to some of these younger males, isn't she? Oh, wait a minute. That male is leaving the safety of the anemone. He must be on a search for something, just like the clownfish back at Safari World. Now's my chance. I need to follow him. Wait for me, little fella. Hmm, he seems to be taking an interest in this old shell. I wonder why he needs a shell. That's interesting. It looks like he's trying to push it back to the anemone. Why on earth would he be doing that? Hmm. Maybe I can help. Oh, ah, it's too heavy. Oh, and the little fish has given up. I wonder what he was trying to do. Oh, at this rate, I don't think I'm ever going to solve the mystery. Whoa! Oh, what's happening? Oh, it's not just any old shell. It's a shell with a hermit crab inside. And this one's obviously got places to go. Sorry to bother you, hermit crab. Oh, oh, those baby fish certainly seem to be enjoying all the bubbles. I wonder if they've seen the cichlid I'm looking for. I'll go and ask. Whoa, whoa, oh, hello everyone. Can I just ask you? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, can I ask you a question? Whoa, this is fun. I can see why you like it. Uh, anyway, uh, like I was saying, uh, has anyone seen a cichlid around here with a big black spot on its side? <laughs> oh, where are you going? I didn't mean to scare you. Come back. I wonder where they're going. Come on, let's follow them. From up here, they look just like ants. 
Oh, wait, there's something up ahead. Ah, that must be Mum and Dad. Wait a minute. Small yellow fish with a black spot on the side. It's the cichlids I'm looking for. Hello, you two. Most species of cichlids are excellent parents. They keep a close eye on their youngsters, or fry, as infant fish are sometimes called, until they're big enough to look after themselves. They've got quite a way to go yet, though. Right, now to get the photo I need. Uh, would you mind backing up a bit, please, so I can get you all in? Just a bit more. And can you turn to your side so I can see the spot, please? Ah, perfect. Thank you. Right. Focus. And... Huh? Was it something I said? Oh, no. It wasn't me. It was that stingray I saw earlier. Hey, wait for me! A stingray would definitely gobble up those fry. I'm glad Mum and Dad saw it coming and led their babies to safety. Wait. What's it doing? It looks like it's burying itself in the sand. Of course, that's how stingrays camouflage themselves when they want to launch a surprise attack. I need to warn the cichlids. Watch out, Mum and Dad. There's a hungry stingray hiding back there. Uh-oh, it's on the move again. And it's coming this way. Swim for it, cichlids! Swim! Oh, why aren't they swimming away? No, not that way, Dad. Whoa. He's taking on the stingray. That is one feisty little fish. He's done it. I told you cichlids were good parents. Right, at last I can get my photo. Smile! Got it! 